Sonic, the heart of your system. We recently tested if it's possible or what happens if we cut some of the cables of an 8-pin or 6-pin PCI Express power cable. In detail, we were testing a 2080 Ti and cutting more than 50% of the 12-volt cables and tested if it was still working fine and it was still working fine, which means that the specs are a little bit out of hand and the specs should be updated for nowadays VGA. Uh, if you're asking yourself why I'm saying that, you should maybe check out the previous video or the video I'm talking about, so the 8-pin uh, power video, that one was posted several weeks ago. Make sure you check that out before watching this video, it should be um, very interesting as a baseline for you. And in today's video we will test if it's possible to use a VGA just and power it just with riser cables. Basically we have those riser cables here, we'll plug it into the mainboard and we will see if we can leave away completely the 8-pin and 6-pin power connectors. After the previous video I asked myself if it's possible that we power the VGA completely from riser cables. The reason for that is that I was looking at the mainboard randomly and I saw the connector down here. This additional power connector which you have probably seen on multiple mainboards. It's a typical normal 4-pin Molex connector. In the past some of the mainboards had those power connectors like a 6-pin PCI Express connector especially uh, in the area of let's say socket 1366. It was usually common that a 6-pin PCI Express connector was used instead of a 4-pin Molex. This connector is for additional power supply to the PCI Express slots. If we take a look at the power supply or the voltage di distribution on the mainboard, we have the two 8-pin EPS connectors on top here which are exclusively for CPU power consumption. So the CPU VRMs are totally powered over the 8-pin EPS connectors. And we have the 24-pin connector on the right side here which is basically powering all those additional controllers on the mainboard, if it's a SATA controller, network controller, if it's the VRM of the memory, all of those voltage sources are typically powered over the 24 pin connector. The 24 pin connector also provides power to the PCI Express slots. We have four PCI Express slots in total on this board. That's also the reason why I picked the Rampage 6 Apex for this video. It was the only board I had laying around with uh, four full-size PC Express connectors because it's typically made for this purpose and I'm, I know that it has uh, proper traces, proper layers and also proper uh, PC Express slots. I don't really want to test this on a 60 euro motherboard because I'm not sure if the slots or the traces and everything are capable of what we want to try. Basically if we follow PCI Express specs we know that each slot can provide 75 watt of power. And if we add up four of those PCI Express slots, we know that it's 300 watt total, which is the same as the Radeon 7. So in the video we will try if we can power the Radeon 7 instead of using two normal 8-pin connectors, we will try to use three riser cables. Those are PCI Express times one Calling riser cables. If you're interested which model it is exactly, you can find the link down there. And um, it's, it's really just a normal riser cable which you would use for something like Bitcoin mining, I assume. What we will do is we will split apart those tiny cables. Then we will test if we can combine three of the riser cables to two of the 8-pin PCI Express power cables that are typically connected to this card and see what the mainboard is really capable of. For first, or at first, we will try to do it with the 4-pin Molex in addition, which should be connected according to the manual if you're occupying all PCI Express slots, which makes sense if you're running like Quad SLI or something like that, which doesn't really exist anymore those days. But we will also try if we can just use the 24-pin connector and nothing else and see what happens. But first, let's take a look at the pinout of those cables. The front part, actually this whole part here, is always the same. It doesn't matter if it's a PCI Express times 1, 4, 8, 16, it's always the same. The part in the front is basically voltage supply and only the part on the left here is for data transfer. So that, that's the part where we have one PCI Express line or when it's extended to let's say times 4 then it's just longer. That's where you have all those PCI Express lines. The area in front here, you can see those two pins that are connected, that's 12 volt. Then the smaller one is also 12 volt, the one next to it is ground. Those are the connections we will use for the VGA, basically um, solder wires to here to 12 volt and to ground. We have additional ground layers here or ground 
um, traces here, this one on the total left, also the third from the left is also a ground connection. So we will also use the additional ground connections because it doesn't hurt to have more ground. Taking a look at the other side, you can see it looks quite similar. Again, right side is the PCI Express connection, left side is for basically voltage supply. So the two ones that are connected right here, that's 12 volt. The two that are connected right here is 3.3 volt, which we won't need. So we will just use the 12 volt connections and some of the ground pins to attach it to the cable. I removed the cables from the riser cards. Those are the empty cables, which are not used anymore. So we have just the PCBs with the empty solder pads. Now I will attach a normal PSU cable from Seasonic. Luckily, this one is already one of those single cable to dual eight pin adapter things, which makes it a lot more convenient, a lot easier. Basically, we have eight cables on here and six of those we will use and split them on the three PCBs, so each PCB will have once 12 volt and once ground. Ground wires are already attached to the PCB. Before I will attach also the 12 volt cables, I will insulate the PCB and the wires going off from the PCB to make sure I cannot have any shorts between ground and 12 volt because it's very close to each other right in front here. For that I'm using a liquid insulation tape. This one is from Mibanco. I actually used to use Plastidip liquid insulation tape. I'm not sure if that stuff is still available. This one has been in my drawer for, I don't know, three years. Just putting it in a little syringe and then putting it on the wires. I'm also using this for VGA and mainboard insulation to prevent VGAs and mainboard from condensation if I'm doing XOC.
Now that I also soldered and attached the 12 volt wires, which you can see the ones that are not insulated yet, I only have to insulate them with the liquid insulation tape and then we are good to go and we can mount those adapters in the mainboard. System is up and running, everything is set up. You can see I also attached a current clamp to it. We have the four pin Molex connected to the mainboard in addition. Do you know what really drives me crazy every single time? So I tried or I just spent two hours trying to install the driver of this card and I was really, I was about to get mad a little bit because I thought, what's wrong with Windows? Then I tried the second Windows, which also didn't work. Then I was thinking, does the card maybe have issues? And I downloaded a second driver and tried multiple different things until I thought okay okay I know what the problem is and once again the date in my OS was set to the year 2191. That's what happens every single time I'm getting engineering boards that were not hooked up to the internet yet so they're not synchronized with the time and the date which is usually what you do you set your you uh, power on your system you go to windows and you have your internet connection it will synchronize the, the time and date automatically but usually i don't use internet for my test benches here so they are not connected to the internet so they cannot synchronize date and time and for whatever reason if your date is higher than the year 2077 microsoft or windows 10 cannot install drivers anymore Microsoft or Windows 10 doesn't know anything above the year 2077. It feels like the millennium, th millennium thing where people were saying from the year 2000 the lights will shut down and all this kind of crap. Ah, oh, yeah, this really, every single time. It takes me like one or two hours and then I'm like, oh, what date is it? And then it's like, oh yeah, it's 2191. Well, here we are, card is installed, everything is up and running. That's cool. On the current clamp we can read very low idle power consumption, 0.3 amps, it's almost nothing. We will just use a little bit of Fermic right now to stress the card. And then we can see what the power consumption looks like. It's 22 amps, that's actually quite solid. Uh, together with the 75 watt of the PCI Express slot we should be pretty much on the limit. And so far it's not getting warm, I think so at least. I think I'll just keep it running for half an hour, for one hour and then we will check back, check how things look like. Fermic has been up and running for 18 minutes now. As you can see, nothing burned, everything is still alive. I attached a thermocouple to the 24 pin connector. It goes up to sometimes like 36 degrees Celsius. You if you touch the cables of the 24 pin connector, you can feel that it's a little bit warm. Same goes to the four pin Molex, which is still fine. If it's like 35, 40 degree, it's still well between, uh, within specs, really no issue here. Also just touching those small PCBs, I cannot really feel anything, like nothing unusual. There's a lot of heat coming from the VGA, so it's also a little bit tricky to check if the heat is really there or not but since everything has been up and running for 18 minutes I think it's pretty much safe to say that this actually works and doing this with a high power VGA like a Radeon 7 means that on a normal VGA like it's say 1070, 1060, RX, 580 a card in this direction it would be absolutely safe because you know we often have those discussions that People are saying the PCI Express is out of spec, so the card would draw, let's say, 85 watt from the PCI Express connector, and then a lot of people are saying, oh my god, it's going to burn my PCI Express slot of the motherboard because it's out of spec by 10 watt. Obviously, if it's a very cheap, very low-end motherboard, I wouldn't guarantee for anything, but if it's a high-end motherboard like this, 
I don't think there would be an issue drawing, I don't know, like 100, 120 watts over the PCI Express connector, at least for a short time frame. You also have to keep in mind for the small PCBs I connected, I didn't occupy all pins. I didn't occupy all 12 volt and all ground pins. I think if you would uh, connect all of them, then you have much more headroom than what we have now. I think there are like two additional pins for ground and 12 volt each, which I didn't occupy for now. So if you would connect all of them, if you would connect the whole 16 uh, PCI Express lanes, there's a lot of additional grounds in between, which is really, really helpful for the power distribution. That's something I didn't do, which shows that there is much more headroom that those PCI Express slots can take a lot more than what people usually think. That's something I just wanted to prove with this video. You can just power your Radeon 7 completely just from PCI Express slots. It's not really a problem. I wouldn't recommend to do it for 24 seven, obviously, because I really don't know what the effect will be after two or three years. It's just something to prove that it wouldn't just extremely or directly burn your PCI Express slot. So that's the end for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below what you think about it. If you have any other special ideas in this direction, let me know. See you soon.